Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. I'm Stone. Uh, long time no see, haven't been recording. Don't mind my skin, it's uh, Hitler for English project. Anyway, today I'm talking about, I'm gonna talk about the Java gates and the truth table in Java. Now the reason why I made this video is because some of my friends in my computer science class doesn't understand what a truth table is or how it works. So I thought, hey, what is a better way to explain it than using Minecraft, you know, a Java game that is pretty, pretty fun and pretty simple. So yeah, here it is, I made this video and I hope this helps you. All right, so here's the instructions. So for, this is a Minecraft lever, all right? This is the input for all of our systems. Think of this as your everyday light switch. This have a binary value of either zero or one. One is up in the up position, it represents a zero. And one's in the down position, it represents a one. The zero means that the input is false. And the one means that the input is true. And for the output, I use the lantern as an example. And when the lantern is on, the output is true. The lantern is off, the output is false. It's pretty simple. All right, let us move on to the first one. First, we have the OR gate. We have input A, this lever, and input B. Input A and input B are both in the false position right now. For the OR gate, the instruction is, if, you, if one of the input is true, then the output is true. So let's see, if I flip input A into a true, then the output will be a true. Vice versa, if I flip input B into a true, the output will still be a true. And then if I flip both input A and input B to be a true, the output is still true because only one of them need to be true for the output to be true. The symbol for the OR gate in the equation is a plus sign. Moving on, we have the AND gate. It's a little harder than an OR gate, or not really, the same thing. AND gate, the instruction is, uh, the output is only true when both of the input are in the true position. So let's see, if I flip input A into true, but input B is false, so 1, 0, the output is 0, false. However, if I flip input B into a true as well, then the output is a true, because both inputs are in the true position. The symbol for the end is simply a dot, like the multiplication sign in math. Next up, we have the NOR gate, N OR. Basically, it's not OR. It's the exact opposite of OR gate. So the OR gate is when one of the input is true, then the output is true. But for the NOR, is one, if one of the input is false, then the output is true. So let's see, if I flip input A into the true position, the output remains to be true because input B is in the false position. Now if I flip input B into the true position, then the output becomes a false because they're both in the true position and none of them is in the false position. And that is why. The symbol for the NOR is a cross with a line on top of it. The line is used to negate whatever comes below. It's used in the equation. And if you want to negate something in the Java programming program, you just draw an exclamation mark in front of it. Last, I mean, last of the simple ones, we have the in end. And as you can expect, it's the exact opposite of AND gate. For the AND gate, uh, the output becomes a true only when both the inputs are false. So let's see, if I flip input A into a true, the output becomes a false. However, if I flip both of the inputs to be true, guess what happens? It stays as false, because only when both of them are false, the output is true. For the symbol of an end, I have a dot with a line on top of it to negate. And last two, the pretty more advanced ones, we have XOR. XOR is normally OR, but only true when only the one of the input is true. Now it might be a little confusing, so here I'll show you an example. If I flip input A to be true, the output becomes true, just like an OR gate. However, if I flip input B into the true position, the output becomes true as well. But if I flip both input A and input B into the true position, the output remains false. 
because, as it says, only one of the input is true for the output to be true. So 1 1 will result in a 0, but 1 0 or 0 1, 0 1 will result in a 1. And the symbol for the XOR is a circle with a cross inscribed of it. Inscribe of it. Lastly, we have the XNOR. It's kind of like everything combined. For the XNOR, the output is true only when both of the inputs are the same thing. So let's see. If I have input A as the false, uh, false position and same with input B, the output is true because they're both in the zero position. However, if I flip input A into the one position, output becomes false because they're not in the same position. It's one zero. But if I flip input B into a true as well, then the output becomes true because now they're in the same position. One one results in a one. The symbol for the x xnor is a circle but with a line on top of it to negate. Just opposite of xor. And that is it for the tutorial guys. I hope you learned something from this. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure my computer science teacher will be watching this. So you know, some bonus points to my grade will be very nice, very nice. Alright, and uh, yep, that's the end. Hope you have a great day. Thank you guys.